I'm going to preamble as fast as I can. I have been giving this tutorial over Discord to new players in Tailspire for a little while because a bunch of people are playing in Tailspire with me because they're playing Larry Moore and Larry Moore works really well over Tailspire and Tailspire is what I use. I have the unique challenge of playing with a massive number of people, right? I mean, I, I've, I've given this tutorial to probably over 30 people at this point. I'm sick of giving it. So I was gonna make an unlisted video, then I realized this video was sponsored by Tailspire. This is the only good and right way to move in Tailspire. Um, I'm gonna record this in sections so I don't meander too much like I just did. Section one, creating a mini. Space bar, click the hammer, click the goblin, find a mini, click it, put it on the board by left clicking it either once or many times, then right click to make the mini stamp go away. You can copy miniatures by selecting them and pressing control C. You can find miniatures in the menu just by pressing C and clicking them. That's sort of the, the color picker, I guess. Section two. Let's move that mini. Click the mini and use the direction keys to move them. You can also use a controller, but I wouldn't because this is the worst way to move miniatures, primarily because they will occasionally ascend to heights uh, that you don't want them to if Tailspar thinks you're trying to climb because they're grinding into a wall or whatever. But what we're gonna do with this mini is we're going to, we're gonna walk underneath these stairs here or underneath any kind of ceiling or anything and you'll notice, whoop, oh, the cut height changed. Let me move back out. Let me move back in. Notice how the cut height is going up and down. It's actually represented by this little green thing on the right. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's take a look at what's happening here. A line is actually shot straight up out of the top of your selected miniature. And as soon as it hits something, Tailspire goes, let me get that and everything above it out of the way for you. You can use your mouse scroll wheel to scroll all the way out, which will display everything above your cut height again. And okay, now actually look at what happens if I double right click the stairs here. And you'll notice something interesting. The cut height's been set to the sky again. Why is that? Scroll in, you'll see a little donut. You see that donut? That's your pivot point. You can move your pivot point horizontally by using WASDA and you can reset it by double right clicking on just about anything. When you hold down middle click, your camera rotates around your pivot. And that's why the camera rotates in a way that might seem strange at first until you figure out, oh, it's actually rotating around this specific point. What's interesting is double right clicking will change your pivot, but it'll also check above your pivot and reset the cut height as though it were a mini. Down, up, down. The difference is once you set your cut height with double right click, unlike with the mini, it doesn't constantly change. It just gives you a bit more control, really. Speaking of more control, I'm gonna move maps to a simpler map. Like I, that, uh, that, that other map is just me showing off a map that I'm really proud of. But this one it helps illustrate points a little bit better. If you wanna move vertically, one of the best ways to do that is to scroll out and then use double right click to kind of Skyrim climb up structures. You can set your cut and pivot height over on the right by manually dragging them up or down. I don't really suggest that. I think even though that is a solution in the moment, if you get used to the idea of navigating with double right click, it starts to feel more lizard brain direct. You can get where you wanna go. You can cut open doorways. You can take a look what's under a ceiling really quickly. You can, you know, you can navigate better. You can also double right click to navigate massive horizontal distances like so. And you can get back like this. This might take a couple clicks. Now, I mentioned that using the direction keys was the worst way to move your miniature, and that is true. Um, here are some other ways. Firstly, you can click and drag a miniature. You can also use the lasso tool to select and then click drag multiple miniatures at once, although that can be a little bit unpredictable. It runs into some of the same issues that you would run into if you're using the direction buttons, but you do have some more fine control over where you're placing the miniature. It's not locked to a grid. You can also hold down Alt in order to change the facing by dragging in the direction you want them to face. You can hold down Control to change the height. Most useful of all, if a special ruler is turned on, whenever you drag a creature, they will measure between the two points that you've dragged them, like so. If that is not happening, press M4M, which opens the measurement window, turns on creature measurement, and closes the measurement window. Speaking of measurements, you've got a bunch of rulers in this menu. Uh, the most useful one probably is the line ruler number two, um, which you can left click to put a bunch of different points on a line. And then when you're done, you can right click to let go of the tool. If you right click again, you'll close it. But if instead you right click one of the nodes, then you can lock it into place. And you can do this with any of the other rulers too. 
I forgot to keep counting sections. Uh, section I forget. The best way to move. Shift, click. That'll give you a ghost, and then use that ghost to place the miniature where you want it to be. Click. Let's do that a couple times. Shift, click. Click. Shift, click. Click. I totally forgot the most important bit, which is if you're shift, click, moving, you can move through walls as long as your cut height is set properly. This arch specifically has bad collisions, and it's used everywhere in people's maps whenever you download maps from Tales Bazaar or Tales Tavern because it's a beautiful piece of geometry, but they, a lot of people clip it through other stuff, and then this is what happens when you try and walk through one of those doors. Using directions. Using shift click. Now, uh, other sort of essential little things that you might want to know how to do. Uh, one, uh, if you hold down tab, it will, if you're in GM mode, it'll put you into predator vision. If you double tap and hold down tab, it'll just show you everybody's name. If you right click, you will get a radial menu that's got a bunch of different options. The main ones you're going to be using are this to knock something over. Um, also, you can go through the GM options to rename a miniature or make it unique or change its size um but generally if you're renaming i just use f3 side note if it's your room just make everybody a gm it's silly not to finally if you're a gm then you can press the l key in order to have a little flashlight that you point at stuff i i don't think players can do it maybe they can and that's for the most part the basics of miniature movement in tailspark I hope this actually helps some people, and uh, I know it'll help people that are playing in my games because I'm never doing this tutorial again. <laughs>